So when me and my brother were younger, we used to do something which I acknowledge was foolish teenage hijinks, but it, it was quite fun. Right, we lived in a, a quintessential English village and up at the old, old Anglican church, which wasn't used, it was a bit ramshackled and the graveyard, the cemetery was all overgrown. There were half a dozen or so black death graves, or at least that's what we understood they were. They were ancient, they were old, they were kind of fenced off in, in black. They were, they, it was a scary, scary corner of this scary cemetery. And me and my brother used to go up there after dark when it was pitch black and we'd dare each other of who would go into the cemetery. We were too respectful to ever step on any of the graves, probably too frightened as well, but would we walk the overgrown path that went round and into this black death corner? I remember my heart pounding, sweating, absolute terror, but there was no way I would let my older brother be better than me. And so I hung in there longer than he would and then would run out screaming, proper terrified, but kind of exhilarated at the same time. And it's a really daft little story, I know. But I always think of it when I read this amazing story that's recorded in, in Luke chapter 8. Because there is a man who's being forced to live in that kind of terrifying and, and nasty experience amongst the gravestones. He's a man who's been possessed, we're told actually by a legion, a, a whole army of demons. Evil has just overtaken this man's life. And even his friends and family are so terrified of him and what he might do. They've, they've put him into shackles and they've said he cannot live amongst the living. He has to go live amongst the dead. And they've, they've sent him off into the graveyard. Now it says that he, he breaks those shackles. He, he cries out. He's in such agony and despair and anger that he cuts himself. It's a horrendous situation. Jesus meets this man, and as is Jesus' way, he has incredible compassion and love for this situation. And with just a few words, those demons, those evil spirits, submit to Jesus, and he sends them off, and, and they're dealt with. And this man, we're told, in sentence 35, is now sitting and in his right mind. He's finally free of this horrific experience. What interests me is the response of this man's friends and family. How do you expect them to respond to what Jesus has done? Just think about it for a moment. This man uh, has lost everything. They'd be glad. They'd be excited. They'd be thrilled. Well, let me read actually their response in sentences 35 through 37. It says this. The people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And then a little bit later in sentence 37, it says they were overcome with fear. Just think about that for a moment. They'd been terrified of the man. They'd shackled him up and sent him to a cemetery. He's now free of all that, sitting, clothed, in his right mind, but they're overcome with fear. They're not frightened of the man anymore. They're petrified of Jesus absolutely petrified, overcome with fear. Because Jesus, with a couple of words, has proved himself stronger than the strongest thing they've ever experienced. That they couldn't shackle him with iron chains. They couldn't control him in any way, shape or form. And Jesus speaks and that evil submits to Jesus. They are absolutely terrified of Jesus's power. What they haven't seen is Jesus' goodness. They, they should recognise his power, but they haven't seen his goodness. The man who is rescued from the evil spirits has, because he's sitting at Jesus' feet in his right mind. There's, there's no fear in that man. A little bit later on in sentence 38, we're told the man literally begged to go with Jesus, to be with Jesus and near Jesus. See, that man knew about Jesus' power. He'd had the front row seat. It wasn't that he was blind to the enormous power that Jesus had. He saw that, but he also saw Jesus' goodness. He knew that Jesus was not safe, but he did know that Jesus was good. So how much of Jesus do you see? Do you have a right fear, a right reverence, respect for the enormity of Jesus' power? Do you have a real realisation of just how good he is and the way he wants to use that power with incredible compassion upon you.